There it goes. Hello, friends. Hi, this is Sally on Camp Creek. You can see my light literally gigging up there, but it's too warm to turn it off, so it's on. Although my house is not warm, it's actually the perfect temperature. If I had a thermometer or whatever, if I could see over there, I could see the one on the wall. I guarantee you it says perfect on it because it is perfect in here. It's not been hot all day long in my house, and I'm so glad for that. I did open the windows because there's like a storm outside, which it's a pretend storm. It never really rained, unfortunately. But it clouded up and it got black and it got all the, I think it got all the weather guys excited. They get excited around here over a lot of just a little bit. So they get excited. Anyway, um, I want to talk about crochet. <laughs> it is Monday. I think it's about 10 o'clock in the evening. And it is April 15th. It's income tax day. No wonder my heart's, uh, been pounding and aching today. No, it really hasn't. But it is income tax day. At least for us. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway. Um, so, what have I worked on? Well, I have not worked on, I haven't worked on anything new, I don't believe. Um, and I haven't worked enough on the stuff that I need to work on. Here's my bunny I couldn't find last time. This was a kit from Dollar Tree, and minus this and the cape, this was the amount of yarn I got right here. It did come with these cool little eyes and the stuffing, but obviously my bunny's too big because it's not stuffed very well, and I had to use some sock yarn to finish it. The next one I make, because I got several little kits, I'm going to try very hard to make smaller, okay? I followed the directions, but this is not an uncommon thing to happen to me when I make things, little things. My little things always end up bigger, but he's kind of cute, and he, he looks very Hobbit-esque to me. I feel like, you know, his name should be, I don't know, something, some, something Hobbit-ish sounding. He's got a little cape. He needed something. He looked naked. I didn't want him to be naked. Okay, so um, I think I was showing you my Granny Square baby blanket made out of Barnett blanket yarn. I got it finished. I don't know if I showed it finished or not. That's the side without the textured um, window panes. Here's the window pane side. That's what we call that when you do that is we always called it um, windows with panes. <laughs> I don't know why but see I did slip stitches here and it gives it that um, raised textured look. This Barnett blanket yarn is very textured corsets blanket yarn. It's very it's already bulky and I wasn't really crazy. I like it. I, li I think it's pretty. It looks like a boy. Um, and it has been washed and dried. Blocked. But I'm going to wash it again. Uh, because I washed it in Tide. And I should have washed it in um, Woolite or something. I have some Woolite over there. I'm going to wash it in Woolite. Uh, I mean, it's 100% acrylic. But the wool light won't come out with a smell. There's the green and the blue and the tan and the charcoal. It's those colors. And it is five by six. So it's about 40 inches, which is what I like in a baby blanket. It's thick. It's going to be a winter baby, so it might get wrapped in this, but my guess is this will go on the floor and baby will lay on it. Or it'll go in a giveaway box. You never know when you make homemade things for people if they're going to like them or not. But I think she will. But nonetheless, I enjoyed working on it and, and all the above. But I'm going to wash it again because I washed it in tight. I had some, I bought some tight. And washed it in Tide. 
And usually if I buy Tide, I don't usually buy Tide. But if I do, sometimes I get stains in the grandkids' clothes that Tide will get out when other stuff won't. But it's got such a strong uh, fragrance. And I feel like the Tide without any fragrance doesn't get spots out. I know that doesn't make much sense. But um, I should have got the Mountain Fresh one instead of Original because it is way strong. And I wash this about two weeks ago and put it in the closet. Maybe it wasn't two weeks ago, 10 days maybe. Uh, I laid it out on the bed in the back room and blocked it. Of course, it doesn't block. It just, you know, puffs right back up. But I got it laid out and um, it was smelled so potent. <laughs> so I put it in the closet just on the shelf above my clothes in my closet. And it's still at this point, which I planned on rewashing it as soon as I got it out and smelled it. Um, I will wash it again, but in two weeks that odor did not fade. So here's some of my Barnett blanket that I had left over. I bought a skein of each color and two skeins of cream because I didn't know how I was going to uh, put the blocks together and I didn't know how much of a border I wanted at the time. So with this I'm going to make another blanket for the same baby and I'm doing this um, basket weave stitch. I'm just going to do stripes. I'm going to try to do, I think all of my colors can be about this deep because I think that's about how much I have left. And this is about 36 inches. Did I measure like that? <laughs> Everybody measure that way, just me. <laughs> anyway, so that's 36 inches wide is a good, that's uh, my normal baby blanket size. I used to make them huge and they were too big. And my daughter said, you know, those are too big. People, won't, they can't use it till the kid's three because it's so big. So I quit making them quite so big. But I have this and I have um, all of the colors I have about this much. So I think I can get, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, seven rows deep. And I think I'll be able to get it square at 36 inches or hopefully a little bigger than square and then I can give that to her also she really liked those colors and that's what she picked out so that's what I've got the other one I finished which um, I have not washed yet but I will is this one this is for a little girl baby and she's having a, a shower church has given her a shower um, in about, let's see, that'll be not this Sunday, but the next that'll go, go up. Anyway, I got all my ends tied in and their, their little girl's name is Dahlia. I believe it's going to be Dahlia Faye. Isn't that cute? I just love it. Anyway, I think they said Dahlia. Um, and, uh, is that what they said? Anyway, I think that's what it is, something like that. And so they're doing the nursery in flowers and butterflies. So I thought this looked like flowers and butterflies to me. I don't know. And pinks. Pinks. So, and this one is made out of mostly, I love this yarn. Uh, this is uh, Vanna's Choice that I had. There's some, this... And then the black, the black might be red heart, I'm not sure. Um, let's see, this one down here, this multicolored one, I believe was a red heart stripe. And then this is some good old red heart. I just thought those colors were pretty and that was a scrap I had. I don't know where I got that, but I thought that was so pretty. And then the rest of it is, um, the white is the red heart, I believe. But the rest of it is I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. And it's soft. With little bits of red heart in it, uh, it's still very soft. Very, very soft. And I thought about putting a different border or more of a border or maybe like a Pico border or a um, rosette border or, you know, something girly. But I put this 
uh, lark's foot border on it. It doesn't show very good. And I thought I just kind of like it, and I just didn't put any more on it. I, I, it's busy already. I didn't want it to be so busy that it was scary. Uh, anyway, so I have made very little progress on my sweater, but I have made a little progress on my sweater. You know, I'm just a crocheter. I'm really not a knitter. That's, that's what I tell myself. And I'm not a great crocheter, but I don't have to be great. I can be average. It's okay. Um, but I've got this much done on it, and I've done a few rows since I last recorded. You can see it's getting deeper here. I'm already planning on making one that's shorter at the waist because to wear with skirts. I need to get some skirts made. I need to get my sewing machine out. I say this to myself all the time. But um, I want to make a three-quarter, I want to make a shorter sleeved one, like maybe about here, maybe elbow even. And uh, a little shorter in the waist to wear with skirt. So this is made, this is a size 8 chow goo. Um, knitting needles, interchangeable. And this yarn is, once again, I love this wool, Hobby Lobby, in the color Biscuit, I believe. Yep. And I have a whole lot of it. I have a whole Atwood's tub bucket down here full of it. And that is Tin Can Knits pattern. Um, I've said this all many times before, but Tin Can Knits pattern um, Harvest Cardigan. Anywho, so that's that. This, I used a big hook on this. I used um, a Lantern Moon 9mm on this granny square blanket. And then this was probably an H or an I metal hook. Boy, that's usually what I use for that. Okay, now my pretty, pretty thing. Oh, my socks behind the chair. I have put a little work on. I've got to get those socks done. But this is my pretty thing. It, it looks wonky, but it will block out even, I believe. It's because I stretch my work a little bit when I'm doing it. Isn't that pretty? I'm fixing to put, I'm putting a row of the brown, the, this row, the outline row. That's not what it's called, but that row of brown. I'm in the process of that. And then I'm going to put a small row of green because I just want a little bit of green in it. This is for me. This goes on the couch. And this is all done with Red Heart Ombre. I was at Walmart and they had these pretty ombre colors. The green is apple, I believe. Yes, green apple. And I'm using a 7.5 My Tulip pink hook. And then I have some, the brown is cocoa. I have another plan for this cocoa too. I'm going to buy a couple more of these. I need to crochet arm covers for my couch because my grandkids want to put their feet up there. And I don't want to be that grandma that yells and screams at them. I already yell at them enough for stuff. So I want them to be able to flop on the couch and put their, I mean, it's secondhand furniture, but I, you know, it should last a long time. But I want to make some square doily kind of covers, maybe in this pattern, because this, this is a good pattern. This is for my couch anyway. But just in the plane, it, it matches just exactly my, see that? So I need to make six of those, and I need them to be about... 24 inch square and I'm going to do them in this solid because I don't really want them to stick out but I just want them to protect the couch a little bit. Other color I have is this Anemona which is uh, purpley red and pink, purpley pink and then I have my favorite one is this pink and it's jazzy and I think that is so pretty and these reminded me of my knockout roses that I that I have grown. And I've got all this yarn in this basket. 
in this grocery bucket from my store. And that has worked out so well, so well. This was eight bucks in my little grocery store. It worked out so well, but I'm at the place now where, as you can see, I got yarns tangled everywhere. <laughs> and I'm going to have to get in there and rework that. So, um, yeah, this is that. And look at my tails. Look at that. That is an audiobook right there. What you're seeing there is the future of an audiobook right there. Because that's what I'll do. Because <laughs> I, I'll need something I have to listen to and not watch. <sighs> and I can crochet without looking. So like I have done most of this while watching, um, I like to watch Chinese costume dramas. I don't think that's really what they're called. Historical Chinese television. I don't know. I get it on YouTube. Or I like to watch Turkish dramas with subtitles. I just like stuff with subtitles. Japanese. I've watched a couple of those. Got to be careful with content, though. Some some places, you got to you just mm, no, I can't watch that because they either don't wear enough clothes. I like, so why I don't watch American ones because... They're, sometimes they're not very nice. And at least if you're watching foreign ones, you don't know really half of what's going on. They could be not nice too, but you never know because you're just trying to read the subtitles quick enough to figure it out. I think that's what I like about it is you can try to, it's trying to figure it out. And I love to listen to different languages. So anyway, that's what I do when I knit. Drives my grandkids crazy. They'll say, Grandma, are you watching another costume drama? Uh, and they're usually fun. They're usually innocent and fun and lots of sword fights and um, lots of lots of drama that you just have to figure out. Anyway, it's great. It's great to crochet content. That's what I like to do. Or I like to listen to an audiobook. Too. Oh, look, there's a stinking mistake. Do you see that? Do you see that? That makes me so mad. I can fix it. I'll just run a thread here and I'll just make it. Oh, there's another one. Good. Well, I'm just going to have to rip that out. Yeah, that's got to come out of there. Yep, I got to take that out. You know what? I was watching. I was watching something real dramatic when I did that. I wonder if there's any more. They're all on that side. That's just irritating. I tell you what. If that don't beat all. Well, that's right there, too. Okay, well, that's no problem. Frog, rip it, rip it, rip it. I'll just take it out. That's an easy row to replace anyhow. If it was just one, I would just fudge, but it's not. It's three in a row. Oh, was I think it? It's because I was watching those guys jump around and try to cut each other up with the swords, and one of them poisoned the other, and then they spit blood, and then somebody fainted, and they had to carry them. They're always carrying someone out of the forest, you know. Did I get it? Yes. Okay. And it was too dramatic. That's a bad idea. And it see that's what that's what happens. And I have a place here where I have a pulled place for some reason. I don't know what that's all about. I'll have to fix that too. Annoying. All of these are things that can be fixed with a needle and thread. But I've caught I've caught a partial stitch in there. Oh, that's annoying. But I can fix that. No problem. Anyway, so I got that ripped out. Oh, there's another one right there. I tell you what. I tell you what. Chihuahua. That's so annoying. Anyway. Yeah, there's... I just did it all up and down there. Just did it all over the place. Okay. Oh, we're good now. I can, <laughs> I'll have to crochet all that in or I'll have a big tangled mess. I've already got a big tangled mess. I need to sit down and just detangle. I just need to work on it. Um, I have noticed when I crochet, when I crochet shells, my first my first shells will look really good, but when I get to shell, get to double, uh, double crochet, 
first, second, third. When I get about fourth one, I have to careful of my tension. I've hit the top of the mountain. When I'm going down the mountain, my bottom loop down here will get loose on the sixth, on the sixth double crochet. I have to turn my hand. It's worse if I'm doing this. If I'm doing this, which they say this causes hand fatigue, but that's how I prefer to crochet. Um, if I'm doing this, I don't have the problem. But when I'm holding it this way, which I do think it does help my hands not get so tired, but it does make that loose stitch. I have noticed that. I don't know if anyone else notices that, but um, always on a shell, I have. I will have that, and I can see it in my work. Uh, I can see it, and it bugs me because, you know, my knitting is not <laughs> necessarily consistent. Not like I would like for it to be, but I want my crochet to be better. <laughs> But it's not always, it's not always better. And like I said, you know, someone who doesn't crochet at all will say, oh, you do such a good job. My brother, brother-in-law one time said, I gave him them a blanket, him and his wife or something. He said, your stitches are so even. It's just so perfectly even. I'm telling you, I haven't had that many compliments in my life, but I've had a few. But I remember that one. That was, oh, made my heart flutter. You know, if he had said, you're just, you're, you're just absolutely gorgeous. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have made my heart flutter. Well, I didn't know he was lying, but it wouldn't have thrilled me. But because he said, your stitches are so perfectly even, your tension is just so even. Oh, I was like, oh, oh, anyway. That was a long time ago. My heart doesn't flutter anymore. So, I'm going to have to fix that. That's the kind of compliment you give someone who crochets. You say, or you might say, oh, your color selection is just spot on. Oh, that would be a real compliment, you know. Or you might say, my goodness. You really got that out fast. You just you just started that. How'd you get that done so quick? That's another compliment you can give a crochet. You know, but don't say things like, "Oh, don't make me a crocheted blanket. I don't like those." When you when you roll over in bed, your toes get stuck between the stitches. That's the wrong thing to say. Or don't say, "Oh, you know, I know you put a lot of heart in that, but goodness." I'm just so hot natured. I just don't wear things that are that are yarn made of yarn. It's just too hot for me. Don't say that. You say, "Oh, I just love it." And whenever you're going to go somewhere where that person's going to be there, you just wear it. Just wear it when you know you're going to see it. The rest of the time, you can stuff it in the back of the closet. <sighs> because let me tell you, we work hard on this stuff. And I tell I've told my daughter before and people when you give a gift of, of needlework, crochet or knitting, a long time I never gave anybody anything knitted, but I gave a lot of crocheted stuff because I was better at crochet than knitting and I just was more confident in it, you know. Um, but when I'd say, you're not giving them a scarf, you're giving them a gift of your time. And when when I give something, when I when I make something specifically as a gift for someone, the whole time I'm working on it, I'm thinking about them, and I'm praying for them, and I'm asking the Lord to bless them, and to meet their needs, and to be real to them, and to show up in their life in big ways, and, you know, all of the things. So, help them to live holy, you know, and to do what's right, and just make them a good parent, or a good spouse, or a good student, or whatever. So it's not really a gift of yarn. It's not really just gloves or just a scarf or just a pair of socks. Socks are really, I give socks to people I care big time about. Anyway, um, it's, a, it's a gift of your time. That's what it is. So be appreciative of it. That's all I tell them. Anyway, um, so. Now I'm going to have to go all the way around this. 
before I can put my green row on. Back to this. So see the ombre colors fade in and out, and that's so pretty. That's what I wanted. I wanted to go on to brighten up my couch. It's for my couch. And yes, you can get your holes, your toes stuck in the holes. But my my grandkids don't mind getting their toes stuck. Um, I think my grandson does that on purpose. He sticks his toes through the holes, you know. And so then he can wrap up in it and he doesn't kick the blankets off at night. So you consider it, it's not a holy blanket. It's a blanket that provides toe anchors. That's what they are. Toe anchors so that you don't lose your cover when you're wrapped up in it. That's right. Anyway, so that's all I've got done. I've had lots of housework to do this week, and I'm not done with any of it, and I've still got more housework to do, but I have been trying to sit down a little bit and work on my stuff. Mostly I've been working on this. I need to work on my sock, but I haven't. I haven't done that. But I have worked on this quite a bit, even though it doesn't look like I've got very far. I don't, I mean, I have little bits of time when I can do it, so. Anyway, that's all I've got done. I'm going to rewash my blanket. I'll let, let, um, my, uh, let, yeah, I don't know, lost my train of thought. Oh, my goodness, it's because I need a candy bar. That's what's wrong with me. Yes, I will see if I can get the smell out and have it, give it a more pleasant smell because nobody wants to wrap their baby in a blanket that smells like Tide. Usually I would put it in a second cycle and just let it rinse, you know, with clear water, but I didn't do that because my wash machine that I use is pretty strong and I just didn't want to overwash it. I did think about it when I put that little drop of Tide in there that I shouldn't do that, but. I did it, and I'm, I regret it, and I will go back and rewash it and lay it back out. Anyway, so that's all I know, and I'm going to try to get a little bit more done on my afghan and at least get uh, six or eight more uh, shell rows done on it this week. And I want to, to get about that much, like three inches of my sweater done. That's my goal. Every week, if I can just get three inches on it, I will have it done soon. It will be 104 degrees, but I will have a sweater to knit. That's another thing. It's hard to knit on this when in, during the heat of the day because on your lap, that is so hot. Now, the acrylic is not as hot, you know, and it is a little scratchy, and it's not the most fun to work with because of that. But I tell you, I in my attic, I have an afghan that my mom made out of red heart for my daughter, who's 36. You know, it's weird. My kids could be as old as they are, and I'm so young. I don't know how that happens. But anyway, um, uh, it is still it is still going strong. It's in the attic because it was a real ugly afghan. She had it on her bed for a long time. Then she got older and, and she decided she didn't have to have it on her bed. It was pink and purple and green and lavender and hot pink. It was, yeah. Uh, and she got married and it kind of didn't go with her macho man theme. You know, she, not that he would care. He would probably like a big fuzzy afghan on his bed, but it didn't, it didn't match. So it's in the attic. But it was hauled around and carted around, and that Red Heart yarn is still going strong. And I dare say I could put that in the washer, wash it up, and throw it on the... I ought to do that. Throw it in the kids' blankets in the back room, and it would get wallered another 20 years and probably be just as, like, you know, just as holding up just as well. Um, and after all this time, it is softer <laughs> you know another thing um i have learned that if i put my red heart in the dryer it kind of cooks that um threads it kind of melts them so if i just put it on air fluff a little bit and uh dry it that way it takes longer 
but you can take it out before it's quite done and lay it over the couch or chair or bed and it'll last longer that way and it will soften up and this ombre is softer than a lot of red heart and the the green in this is very soft the pink is very soft the burgundy isn't as soft and the brown is plum scratchy but I trust that it will soften up uh, when it's washed it some of that's the sizing they put in it that comes out um, so anyway that's all I've got done I'm gonna get a few more rows done and then I think I'm taking grandma and the dog and we're gonna go to bed dog sleeps on the floor don't don't misunderstand <laughs> but I will I will put her out first and then she'll lay down on a pallet underneath the window of my bedroom. Two dogs, one under each window. If anyone tries to crawl in my windows, pity the soul, pity the soul. Because that dog will eat him or her. Like, ask my ups man. Poor ups man. He's such a nice fella. And my dog, he just wants to eat him. He just wants to chew him up. Drag him to the pasture, dig a hole, and bury him alive. That's what my dog wants to do. I don't know why, because he's such a nice young man. And I have done all kinds of things to make my dog not give him the stare of death every time he comes. But my dog is just that way. He's very, I don't know what he is. But anyhow, yeah. And he can get you if you crawl in my window. Bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> An old red healer, you know. Ain't nothing meaner than an old red healer, despite what they might say about other breeds. Isn't that right, Max? Huh, Max? Come here. Oh, he ain't gonna do it. He's sleeping. He ain't getting up. Anyway, talk to you later. Have a great Tuesday. Bye.